Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's SANS webcast. Today's featured speakers are Alyssa Torres, SANS analyst and principal instructor, and Kevin Golas, Senior Director of Risk Management and Investigations at Absolute. And with that, I'd like to hand the webcast over to Alyssa. Thank you so much, Carol. I uh, really appreciate it. I am truly, truly psyched to have Kevin with us today. Uh, and, and speaking with Kevin, I know his his background is is just fantastic for this cross section conversation of of different industries, how we can all come to grips with what what lies ahead, uh, this cyber preparedness. I want to introduce myself. My name is Alyssa, and my, my background is uh, digital forensics, incident response. I've been I had the opportunity to teach for SANS, working with SANS students over the last five years. And I tell you, this preparation, this preparation checklist that we put together, I, I know it, it is not a mnemonic. It's not going to be super easy, right, Kevin? But, uh, but I think the takeaways are going to be pretty significant. So, Kevin, I'll let you introduce yourself. What's going on today? I've been around for quite some time as it relates to digital forensics, uh, breach response, and then you know, I kind of went into to the um, world where I did a lot of risk assessments, and I was able to t to kind of to glean some of the information from that. And then coming into Absolute, having technology to be able to back me up to do a lot of the assessments and findings, right, and breach response, um, it kind of like rounded out the circle. So, yep, happy to be here as well, Alyssa. It sounds like you're in the thick of it, so I'm excited to see uh, see what's going to come to pass here. Well, I know the agenda. Before we start talking about how we're going to break down the, the bullet points, I know it's really important to you, Kevin, in, in speaking with you, that we take questions in line with as we're hitting key elements, if, if our attendees are right then have, have questions about uh, one of the concepts that we're going to welcome questions dropped into the chat window. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's good, it's good. So we're gonna first talk about trends. You know, So what are we seeing based on the things that have come up in the news, the cyber breaches that we've, well, shoot, I opened the Wall Street Journal today and, and, and I read about a couple of them. Uh, yeah, more, more information on Under Armour coming out. Uh, let's talk about that first and then we'll pivot into you know, trending of, of what the hackers are using. Finally, let's introduce a uh, cyber checklist. So uh, I was I was pleased to see that you picked out some of the same core elements as me, Kevin. Um, I'll, I'll hand it to you. You're going to get us kicked off here. And we'll start talking about lessons learned. So I wanted to talk about some of the, you know, companies that have been in the news, right? You always kind of learn from people's mistakes. So uh, I just kind of wanted to run through some of these um, Equifax. We had 145 million customers data that was compromised. That was a breach that happened back in 2017. I mean, if you take that 145 million customer records, that's about 44% of the United States population, right? So when you look at that, that's a pretty huge impact, right? And what were the impacts from that? The CEO stepped down three weeks after the breach the SEC charged the former Equifax executive with insider trading. Uh, that person traded stocks before they went public with the breach. That's probably a lesson learned not to do that, right? Um, security experts um, don't really understand, um, like who was, be, uh, they don't really understand who was responsible for the hack, but, and how the data was actually used. So let's get into how that, breach actually happened. Hackers scan the websites for vulnerabilities. That's pretty common, and I'm sure Alyssa has seen that a lot. I think we talked about that too, right, Alyssa, where you see a lot of your compromise from drive-by. Absolutely. So, so when they scan the websites, they're looking for vulnerabilities. I mean, these scanners could be paid for, or they could be um, freeware tools, right? I mean, they're pretty, they're pretty easy to do. A lot of vulnerability was found um, in their web server and then they were able to map to a credit dispute portal server from that they were able to gain additional login credentials and compromise 51 servers total the data extraction happened for more than 76 days so they were in their network for more than 76 days and how they were able to actually compromise and take the data out is they did it in very small um, chunks if you will right so a lot of times when, when, when back in my former days, when we would go and do a breach response, 
we would go and do like network analysis, right? And find out what's on the network, how much is it transmitting? Is it transmitting in not only high volumes, you also want to look at low volumes, kind of exactly what happened here at Equifax. They didn't want to take high session volumes, right? When you're looking at it, could it be kind of easy for anyone to detect? It would also probably set off alarms that you had high volume going outside the network. If you do it in small little chunks and from different servers, it doesn't look, it kind of looks and masks itself as normal traffic. So that's exactly what happened in this uh, scenario. And to date, they've spent, they being Equifax, has spent over $200 million in the last 12 months on their cybersecurity efforts and prevention measures. Yahoo was hacked back in 2013 and 2014. They originally traced the hackers back to a Russian state sponsored hack which you'll see quite often. You'll see that kind of state sponsored and we'll get into some of that in a little bit. But the FBI actually investigated this hack and it took them more than two years. I don't know, Alyssa, do you normally have two years to do a compromise breach response? <laughs> That's a lot of funding. Uh, I'd, I'd need to set aside more budget, I think, for that type of yeah. investigation. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing to me. I mean, so they do a thorough job because to be honest with you, when Yahoo went to them, they said, here are the 26 accounts that have been compromised. You know, we want to file a complaint and this is what happened. And then the FBI did their investigation and it turned out instead of 26, they had 3 billion users that were compromised. So compromise doesn't mean that all and every one of them have been used, right? But they've been compromised. And I think that's one of the key elements is what did the hacker have access to? What did they view? And that's part of, you know, we'll talk about that a little bit later as well, but that's very important to know what did the hacker have access to because that kind of goes into what you have to report from a breach perspective and, and, and validation. But 3 billion users, that's a lot. The next one I want to talk about is Adult Friend Finder. So Adult Friend Finder, 412 million um, users, accounts that were compromised, um, again, that's more than the people in the United States, right? I think the United States Census Bureau had it at like 325 million. So we've exceeded that by uh, a, a quite, quite a bit. Um, the hack include, um, the hack was with, an, again, another web server that uh, um, allowed Russian hackers. Now, it hasn't been, um, it's been traced back to an underground Russian hacking group, but what they were able to do is um, get database servers usernames and passwords in plain text and or some of those were scrambled with using a SHA-1 SHA hash, right? So a lot of that information was stored in clear and plain text for any of the hackers to kind of get to. And then if there was any that were scrambled, they were done with a SHA-1, which is pretty readily uh, available. And I, I would consider that to be low security. Ransomware, we've heard over the last several years how ransomware is pretty rampant, but I was even a little uh, shocked about how big it actually is from a payout perspective. Ransomware payments have hit over $2 billion in 2017. That's double what it was in 2016. I think we all heard about the, um, you know, a lot of the hospitals being hit with ransomware and a lot of other companies hit, but there's a lot that you don't hear about. So the fact that it's up to a $2 billion mark, I think is something to really uh, take serious. <laughs>